Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Aliens and UFOs video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's do another entry here. This one based now on one of your newer suggestions. This one, very interesting in the fact that it not only has to do with one UFO, which is usually what I talk about in these videos. There's usually only one UFO encountered by a small group of people, if even that, maybe even just one individual. No, in this case, it's multiple UFOs, and we're talking a huge number number of them. So much so, in fact, that it's now being used in terms of the word invasion when it comes to this particular UFO incident. So once I heard that word invasion, it absolutely piqued my interest and then I was able to look and then see some more information and then share that with you here. So let's go ahead and let's talk about this. It's known as the 1954 UFO invasion of France. Something where, I don't know why, but during that particular particular time period there in multiple parts of France there was a huge number absolutely huge number of UFO sightings including little men as well little uh, aliens too so let's go ahead and let's talk about all the fascinating information associated with this invasion so what was this 1954 uh, UFO invasion of France well it was again something that occurred with a large number of UFO sightings. There was a particular theme to them too. Number one, it always involved, of course, a UFO, and then in this case, a, a, a strong light of some kind. And then also, the victims who were able to see these things were paralyzed, another uh, theme. And then finally, these little men that they encountered, they all shared the same trait. They were either way, uh, wearing these type of diving suits, or they were about uh, and also about maybe one meter tall at most so you had those three themes all tied into one place with these sightings and the fact that it happened so many times I mean in some cases depending on where you're looking at the information a couple of dozen or a couple of hundred within a small period of time of that year but yes it occurred in 1954 to be specific so not too far back also lots of evidence that people could see I guess in a more modern case as opposed to um, uh, let's say like the UFO sightings from a couple of hundred of years back uh, I found this this great website that chronicled some data associated with the UFO sightings in 1954 and it was quite interesting because apparently in that year there was a little over 3,000 UFO sightings world, uh, throughout Europe and of those 3,000 about 750 of them happened there in France remember I was saying earlier there's the notion that there could be in this case several hundred instances of UFO sightings and sure enough this is one uh, article that was highlighting that fact so 750 of those almost a third of all the UFO sightings happening there, hence the word invasion, because all of a sudden you have all these UFOs in one particular spot, and if you wanted to delve it even further, there was a period um, from October 3rd to October 15th where 80 sightings alone were within a, uh, through, uh, that location of France throughout the, uh, the entire country itself. So, And, and here's, for example, some notable instances. For, uh, for starters, the, this, all of this was chronicled in several books, too. There was a ufologist by the name of Amy Michael who did a book called in 1958 Flying Saucers and a Straight Line Mystery. Then there was was a doctor, Dr. Jacques Valley, who wrote a book called Passport to Magnolia. And then finally, there was yet another book, and this one, 1977, it was by Leonard H. Stringfield, and it was called Situation Red. The UFO siege, because a key word on that where on that part siege. Um, in this case, not using invasion, but using the word siege instead. That one it was very nice because it was able to chronicle about 46 sightings between September 10th to October 27th. Uh, at least uh, in terms of this guy, this Leonard Stringfield, what he included in the book. So a little less than the other number, but it still he was able to put this in there. And then of those, that's where a uh, theme, again, was coming across. That you had, obviously, the UFO with the lights on them. You had the paralyzing factor. And then you had these small, little aliens, almost dwarf-like beings, is how it was described, coming from them. And of those, 
these are six encounters that I'll highlight here for this video and again keep track of that theme September 10th 1954 to be uh, to be specific there at a place called Quarable there was a metal worker a guy by the name of Marius de Wildy. his dog barking outside of his home caught his attention he happened to live by some nearby railroad tracks to be specific and so when he looked out or actually went outside because you know clearly when you have a dog and they just start non just barking nonsensically you, you want to go outside to find out what happens then he saw what he described as these two dwarfs that were by some dark object I guess it was nighttime and it was so dark he couldn't quite specifically see the object itself but yes at least he saw these two small things almost dwarf like walking towards it uh, and in this case he decided to actually stop them so I don't know I guess what got into him necessarily but he thought to himself something's got to be done and so he tried to stop him and that's when he saw a orange light beam the way he described it hit him and it paralyzed him these creatures whatever they were didn't do anything at all he simply just described them as being small one meter tall they had on a bulky I guess stocky look to them and they were wearing these type of diving suits remember I was mentioning that earlier and then that was it they just went into the ship and then they were gone September 17th place called Sinon there was a lady there Ives David who stated the, I'm sorry a guy Ives David who stated the following he too I guess was just walking somewhere he met a creature maybe he just inadvertently crossed its path it was also wearing a diving suit just like the other creatures before and in this case this one decided to try to communicate with him it had a voice and the way he described it was inhuman and incomprehensible so whatever it was trying to state to him almost in a friendly gesture of sorts it was not coming through correctly either way though he didn't have much choice because he too stated that he was paralyzed from this encounter could not move at all and then there was a nearby object another dark object somewhere along uh, towards the downways of the road and that's when when the creature had enough it just simply emitted some kind of greenish light and then just took off like lightning is what he described it and then that was it um, it was gone uh, with the UFO afterwards September 28th place called Buzai's there there was someone by the name of uh, I think it was Monsieur Mercier he stated that he observed something in his vine vineyard he had a lot of grapes um, and it seemed like somebody was stealing a large amount of them so wanting to make sure absolutely certain that he could catch this thief red-handed then when he did so he was amazed to find out exactly what what was causing this when that's when he described that there at night he saw this large dark mass fall about 50 meters away and it was nearby the same area of his vineyard and of course just like the other ones he was paralyzed as soon as this thing landed near him and so he saw these three figures come out from some shaft of light but he did not see what happened afterward because curiously either out of fear or something else altogether he ended up losing consciousness from this encounter October 11th yet another instance here uh, in this case being a sassier near La I hope I'm saying that correctly here there was an encounter involving two people a uh, person by the name of Galois and another one by the name of Vignorant. In this case though they were in a car and once they were driving from one place to another it felt like there was this what they described as an electrical shock coming throughout the car. You know that feeling when maybe like the hair starts rising on, on, on your hands or on the back of your head and then afterward there that, that that same sensation it caused the car headlights to die down I don't know if the car itself stopped altogether but it definitely caused the headlights to die down and then that's because of the sudden darkness that's when they saw that there was something in front of them in this case some kind of craft also dark but they could make out because it was about 50 meters away it was cylindrical fairly thick and then standing right nearby this thing whatever it was 
was were these three dwarf-like creatures. So now you have three of them being encountered in this case. And then yet again, there was a reddish light that was emanating from this type of craft. And then also, one more time, both of these people were paralyzed. As soon as they came across this thing, they could not do anything else thereafter. They were just paralyzed and they could just see it until they, these things got into the craft and then decided to fly away and then that's when they could move yet again. One final encounter here, October 16th, a place called Bailalet. There, there was a doctor, no less, a Dr. Robert. He too was driving when he saw up in the sky these four objects seemed that seemed to be flying in some kind of low altitude in formation too. It's not like they were just flying around randomly. No, almost like a flock of birds. They were flying in some kind of standard formation. And then that's when, to his shock, one of them dropped down, broke the formation essentially, and then went straight to his area. The way he described it was it fell to the ground like an almost like a falling leaf. Like you, if you imagine a leaf, the way it falls left and right as it goes down, imagine that here. It came 100 meters away from him, and then he again, just like the other encounter, felt some kind of weird electric sensation. It caused his engine to die. It caused Caused his headlights to die again and then yet again he was also paralyzed and then one last similarity he saw these cre a figure in this case a creature also about a meter or so tall moving in front of the light and then that's when everything went dark I don't know if he lost consciousness at this point or if, uh, if, if, if it was just that quick and this thing was gone afterward. But either way, though, he then uh, was able to move and then also his headlights turned back on and he, of course, decided to hightail it out of there. But that's just a good example of, of or several examples of, in this case, this UFO invasion. Keep in mind, this is just a small listing of the personalized examples. Uh, previously, as I was mentioning earlier, there were at least 80 sightings in one report, and then in other places, it can go up to, in this case, over uh, 750 uh, happening within France throughout the entire year itself, 1954. There's no no reason why there was this huge, just a huge surplus of these sightings all at once. It hasn't happened before, and apparently it hasn't happened afterward. There was a similarity of some kind in 1966, a couple of years later in Canada, known as the Canadian UFO wave. So maybe I'll post something on that later on too. But either way though, there in France, it happened to have that for that time period. But that's it. If anyone has any more info, anything else to share, maybe if, uh, if, if someone else knows another location where it had those three same characteristics, uh, in this case with those small dwarf-like beings and then also the... Um, paralyzing factor and the UFO with the lights the please let me know below those comments below that'd be really really good to hear and I'll start working on maybe one last aliens UFO video and then wrap it up for this series afterwards so all right everybody thanks again as always take care